we're gonna make a simple, easy DIY roller buckle belt. I've done a video on a belt before, but this one's gonna be even more simple. This one has no stitching included. It's gonna be a single layer of leather. This is a really simple and quick way to make a belt, but you're still gonna get something really quality and rugged in the end. All right, so let's do it. On my last trip to Tandy, I picked up one of these European single bends. I usually like to use bends when I'm working with belts because that's the strongest section of the hide, especially when you get down here closer to the butt. So it helps if you put the billet end of a belt down on the stronger area and the buckle side over here by the shoulder. Oh, and I also picked up one of these books from Tandy. It's called Belts Galore uh, by Al Stolman. This guy is the man. There's so much good information jam-packed in these books. In fact, this page right here, they, go, they talk all about sizing. And if you remember my last belt video, I expressed that I've had some frustration trying to get the sizing right on a belt. He goes into detail about sizing belts. So if you're having a hard time with belts, go pick up this book and just give it a read. It's amazing. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is get a nice straight line along the edge of our bend here. So I'm just gonna use this big long straight edge that I have and my little uh, Al Stolman signature brand head knife. I'll be sure to put a link down in the description for all the tools that I use in this video. I'm gonna mark my line first with my stitching all just so that I know I've got it straight before I make any cuts. Now I'm just using that line I made as a guide so that I can go through it with my head knife here and make my cut. And there we go, we got a nice straight edge to make our straps out of. I'm gonna set my strap cutter to an inch and a half, which is a pretty standard size for belts. There's a little blade in between these crossbars that cut the leather as you draw the straight edge along the handle. If you want a more detailed description of how to use this thing, I've got a video about it and I'll link it in the iCard. And I don't think I mentioned it before, but this hide specifically is eight to nine ounces. Yeah, there it is. And then I'm gonna make a three quarter inch strip here. This is for the keeper on the belt. So of course there's more than one way to skin a cat, whatever that means. You could go through and cut all this, the shapes, everything out by hand, or you can make life a lot easier by using punches like this strap end punch right here. And you can use an oblong hole punch to make the hole that the tongue of the buckle goes through. And then you could use a rotary punch to make your holes. Or we can go over and use my new tipping machine because I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Let me show you what that's all about. All right, this machine is gonna make your life so much easier if you make lots of belts. It's basically the same as a clicker press. It comes with this cookie cutter die that basically has all of the holes and cuts that you need for each end of the belt. This is for the billet end, and this one obviously is for the buckle end. It's got the oblong punch with the two rivet holes. So I'm gonna slide that in, lock it in tight, so I'm gonna cut my buckle end strap out right here. <laughs> I love it! I'm not gonna cut my billet end yet because we need to size it up. There are a couple good ways you can size up a belt. I think the very best way to do it is to go off of an old belt, especially if it's a similar weight in leather. But the important measurement on a belt is not the end of the buckle to the end of the belt. The measurement that you want is from the most used hole to the inside edge of your buckle. That length should match up with the person's waist size. So this particular bend is too short for me to make this belt my size. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says about me, but, but hey, it's no surprise I'm a double XL. <laughs> so instead, I'm just gonna nip it off here at the end. But when you're going off this old belt, you want to line up the rolled part of the leather with the middle of that oblong hole. And then you're gonna make a mark in the leather where the most used hole is. And that is gonna be where you place the middle hole on the billet end of your belt. So let's bring it back over to the tipping machine and make our cut. Oh. Can't have my pants falling down. Perfect cuts every time. Now before we assemble anything, we gotta make sure we take care of our edges. So for this belt, I'm not gonna use any dye or edge paint. We're making this simple and easy. All I'm gonna do is bevel it, do a light burnish with some water, and use a little bit of beeswax to finish it up, and I think it's gonna look great. I just want a real small, rounded edge on this strap, so I'm gonna use my number zero craft tool edge beveler, and I'm gonna run it along the top edge, as well as the corners on the flesh side.
So these are the basic tools we're going to use to burnish our edge. I've got just a little bit of water. I've got this little sponge applicator pad that you can get from Tandy. A little uh, canvas cloth. Wood slicker from Tandy. And just a block of natural beeswax. And this is just a simple little strap jig that I built myself out of some blocks of wood. One side of it has a little bit more of a shallow groove for the smaller straps. And this has a little bit of a deeper groove for the one and a half inch belt straps. But this becomes really useful when you start burnishing because if you don't have it, then you gotta kinda work with the curvature of the belt and the possibility of it tipping over and moving. If you throw it in this groove, uh, it'll stay put and you can get very purposeful with your burnishing. So the reason we burnish the edges is because eventually the fibers in the leather will start to stand up and look really fuzzy. And uh, it's just not a good look over time. So when we burnish it, it lays the fibers down, seals it up, and just keeps it looking good for the rest of its life. Just like with everything in Leathercraft, there's a million ways to do things. This is a very simplified version of burnishing. It works really well, especially when you're working with natural veg and you don't want to darken the, the edge too much. You just want a really clean, natural look. I'm just going to put water on it first, just a little bit, run the slicker down a couple times with a smaller groove, and then work up to a larger groove so that you're eventually hitting a flat surface. And with burnishing, it's not really about pressure. You don't need to push down too hard. It's a lot more about friction. And what you want is for it to eventually start making that kind of a squeaky sound um, and start to see a little reflection in the edge. That's the stuff right there. There are some substitutes you can use instead of the water, like gum tragacanth or saddle soap are both really good burnishing agents. Ooh, yeah. We're getting a really nice finish there. So if I were to only use water, it won't hold up as well. That's why I'm going to use some beeswax, just a light coat. You don't need to go bananas, but just a little bit of beeswax uh, kind of gives it a little protective coat. I'm going to use this little canvas cloth here and just run it up and down the edges. That's the shine I'm looking for. So I rigged up my little Tandy hand press here with the flat plate on the bottom. And then this is actually a little cutting board base plate for the chisel punching. But I decided to put it on top and use it um, to press my logo, which I don't have a specific fitting for on this machine. So I'm just going to use it to kind of help distribute the weight and press it in. Maybe about there. And just apply some pressure. Stock and barrel coming at you live. Now this isn't totally necessary, but I'm gonna throw a little size marker right here uh, just to show you how easy it can be done. I bought this little punching kit from Tandy and it's got all the different sizes in it. You know, waist size 28, 36, 38. It's got double XL, extra small, large, medium. It's got all the little size imprints that you could want. But you better believe I'm gonna throw a double XL on there. Oh yeah, yeah. That should just be my new logo. I'm actually an XL, but I'm a double XL at heart. Now I'm gonna take the little belt keeper and cut it down to about four and a half inches, which is about standard for a one and a half inch strap. So there are a couple different ways you can secure this. You could just punch a couple holes in each end and stitch it together, or um, I'm gonna use this craft tool stapler, and uh, this is actually a pretty easy way to go. I'm gonna put three staples in this. Then I'm gonna take my little miniature Tandy anvil, slip it over there, and just flatten out those staples so that you know they're really locked in. Now naturally the next step will be to install our buckle. With this natural veg tan leather, if you plan on dyeing it or oiling it or anything like that, you can wet this bend down quite a bit and uh, then let it kind of form into itself so it'll mold around that buckle better. Um, but since I'm going to leave it natural, I don't want the water to leave a stain or anything. So um, we're just gonna have to work with it this way. But I figure a lot of you are gonna be dyeing or tooling or oiling or, and, you know, so in that case, you can go ahead and wet things down to get it to hold better. Also, anytime you're stamping or tooling, you can wet the leather down and it'll take the stamp a whole lot better. I'm gonna install this with a couple of double cap rivets from Tandy and uh, use my Arbor Press to set them. Okay, quick note about the tipping machine. I hope this doesn't add too much confusion because this is new to me. I was testing all of this out for the first time. Apparently the two rivet holes are quite a bit closer together than I would probably like to have them um, because once I get my belt loop in there and uh, I'm pushing it in as far as I can, um, that rivet hole 
it's just not far enough out. It, it needs to be right about here where that XXL is. I have a hunch that if I split this belt loop down to about four ounces and maybe even cut it just a little bit narrower so we're just under three quarter inch, um, I think I can get it to work. All right, let's see if we can skive this strap down and get it to fit in there. Thank goodness I've got this deluxe splitter right here. I've got it set to about four ounces and I'm going to split this whole strap down. This is where it's still thick and it's quite a bit thinner down here. There we go. So since I split the leather down, I don't need to do the entire four and a half inches. The thicker the leather, usually the more length you need to get around a certain area. So I'm actually just gonna cut it right at about four inches and I think that'll put us in a good spot. I can see daylight through that hole, so that's a good sign. Obviously, that's a really simple project. You can make it as complex or simple as you want. You can add tooling down the whole thing. You can dye it. You can uh, add a little bit more of a fancy buckle. The purpose of this was to show you how simple it is. Oh, and quick disclaimer, I did use a lot of uh, Tandy's machinery from their new line, but everything that I did can be done using simple, basic entry-level hand tools. The good news is you can make a beautiful, simple product like this all on your own by simply just walking into any Tandy store and picking up some basic tools. That's one of the things I love about Leathercraft is you don't need to make a massive investment in equipment, machinery, anything like that to make beautiful products. That's how I got started in it. That's how a lot of people get started in it. It's just, this, this, these kind of projects are so fun because all of the techniques that go into making a bell are essentially the same things that most Western tack and saddlery guys are doing, but it's something that you can make for yourself that you'll personally use every day. All right, so go get some leather, get some basic tools, and show me what you're making. You guys know I love to interact with you. I love seeing images of what you're making, and uh, that's, that's what this is all about for me. Let's read some comments. I haven't done this in a while, so we might have to, oh yeah, we need to go to the, the Tandy announcement video. There were some good comments in there. Uh, Cody T says, that's the Tandy I go to. I live just down the hill from you. No way, that's crazy. That's awesome, Cody. Love to hear that. I hope I run into you there. Port Leather says, so awesome. Congrats on the new collaboration. Thank you. And Brady Linebaugh says, that vid made me all emotional. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks, Brady. Uh, Harry Rogers says, that's great, Parker and Whitney. Super well done and well deserved. Congrats. Thank you, Harry. That's a big honor because Harry's like one of my favorite uh, YouTube leather craftsmen out there. He's so awesome. I think it's that accent. You can't not like that accent. Terry Leach says, congratulations, you and your family are such inspirations to this community. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Terry, thank you so much. I'm just like, my, my cup is just overflowing. I'm so happy, so grateful for everything that's happening right now. Thank you guys for jumping in on this and being here with us. I've got an entire list of juicy Leathercraft tutorial type videos like this. So we'll be doing this again real soon and I'll see you there. All right, love you guys, bye.